Welcome to Crime Prevention 101 with host Susan Bartlestone. We're so happy you've joined us. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's the host of Crime Prevention 101, Susan Bartlestone. Sexual violence has physically and emotionally scarred the lives of millions of victims, along with their families, friends, and colleagues, touching all genders, ages, races, and economic groups. Since April has been nationally designated Sexual Assault Awareness Month, or SAM, S-A-A-M as we call it, I thought that you and I should start preparing for it right now on tonight's show. So I've invited my good buddies Rebecca Miles and Jay Grace, the co-hosts of the Rape Declaration Forum radio show, to come back and visit me again, if they've been on with me before. And you're going to hear uh, a short clip uh, from one of their shows, Very Courageous Callers, describing her experience, give you a little flavor for the program. Uh, Rebecca and Jay tell me it was one of their most powerful shows ever. Then I've got for you Tracy Cox from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center coming on. Uh, and this is the leading resource on Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So we're going to speak about how you or your organization can hold SAM activities and how to find out what's going on in your local area. I've also got a few great personal safety products to tell you about that I think you're going to love because I love them. So be sure and stick around for that. And to start us off, you know, I always like a little change of pace. So I'll be talking about how to find hidden assets. And I've been fascinated by this subject ever since the Bernie Madoff case. So pay attention to this because you never know when you might be awarded a judgment only to find that all the money is apparently gone. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is Susan Bartlestone, and you're listening to Crime Prevention 101, coming to you live from the city that I love, the always tingling New York City. Uh, Two quick reminders before we start. It's National Youth Violence Prevention Month. So check out nyvpw.org for more information about this subject. And also, March 20th was the first International Anti-Street Harassment Day. And you can go to stopstreetharassment.com to find out more about this. Now, when debtors go missing, when assets or witnesses need to be found, who are you going to call? A skip tracer. And one of the best around is Judgment Recovery Specialist and Forensic Accountant Susan Nash, author of Skip Tracing Basics and Beyond, a a complete step-by-step guide for locating hidden assets. Her company is called CertNet Management Corp., and it's one of the industry leaders in this field. So hello, Susan, and welcome. Hi, Susan. Susan and Susan, right? Yes, it's great. I love it. (laughs) <laughs> we met uh, shortly, uh, a little while ago, at uh, the dinner for the Society for Professional Investigators, which uh, I belong to, and we both go to the to the dinner. And I was just fascinated about what you're doing. So let's just start out by talking a little bit about what skip tracing actually is. Well, you know, Susan, skip tracing is the art of finding information about somebody that doesn't want to be found. And it's like pretty much that simple. They don't want to be found, and we have to find them. And why would we, you know, why would we want to be finding them? Who's looking for them? Well, usually we want to find them because they owe money or they're entitled to money. They're going to be a witness. Um, They need them for regular business, everyday transactions, insurance companies and banks get bank statements that are returned and they have to find the rightful owners. So it's something that we need every day. And this is something I think that the, I, I think the Bernie Madoff accountants are <laughs> trying to, the prosecutors are trying to find what he did with all that, those monies. That's exactly correct. They're actually trying to find all of his hidden assets, and they're skip tracing to see where they went. Unbelievable. And, I hope, and, and, they, and they can really be deeply hidden, too, can't they? Of course. You know, 
a hidden asset is an asset that's not very easy to find mm-hmm. because it's not on a balance sheet or financial statement. And it's very hard to value or quantify it because its value changes from minute to minute, like gold, for example, whether it's in jewelry or in bars. Sometimes it's Mm -hmm. $1,000, sometimes it's $1,200, sometimes it's $800, just like gas. It keeps on going up, up, and away. It changes every Mm -hmm. day. Now, I know that attorneys uh, would hire skip traces. What other kinds of of, uh, companies or or industries would, would hire them? Well, you know... Every business in every different industry has a need for skip tracers because usually monies are owed to them or they need to find them for everyday reasons to either um, perform background searches or uh, ev- their everyday business occurrences where you need to find people and you need to find their assets. Even in divorces, sometimes the husband or the wife mm. skips out. That's right. Another another kind of thing like that. Sure. Absolutely. Now you I was kind of looking through the review on your book and it's and it mentions some unusual names of these are some tricks that you have. Suggestion and auto suggestion trade craft and trick craft, roping out. You've been doing this, what, about 20 years now? Well, we're actually going on our 16th anniversary. Ah. And, yes, there's all different kinds of secrets in the book, and they're really priceless, and anybody that would like to learn how to skip trace will definitely pick up some secrets for their bag of tricks. Just tell, tell me a couple of them. Like, what's suggestion and auto suggestion? Who am I suggesting to? And well, what am I you're suggesting? actually suggesting to possibly the person that you want to um, skip trace. You may, or the person that lives with them, their husband or their child. Let's say that the child picks up the phone. You may say, "Hi, is mommy there?" And he may say, "No, mommy's in the garage." Bingo! I already got the answer to my question. So I you got to be a little devious. Right? You got to be a little devious to do this. You're like a, you're you're a de- detective. Well, it's kind of like detective work. That's very true. It really is. And what's trick craft? I like the name. Trick craft are tricks that people use in their craft. For example, if you're a magician, you may have a magic deck of cards or a white rabbit. So they're secrets that are exclusive to an industry or a trade. So so skip tracing has its trick craft. Every industry has its trick craft. Okay. So is there a secret that you can give us? Like what would be one of the trick crafts that you talk about maybe in the book? Well... Something that's very important that I talk about in the book and is very practical all the time is to think about when we're looking for hidden assets or we're skip tracing the debtors, especially in respect to hidden assets which are not shown, it's important to read between the lines. And I mean that both literally and figuratively because... Mm. If an item is not shown on a financial statement or on a balance sheet, like let's say goodwill or frequent flyer miles or Mm -hmm. hundreds of different types of hidden assets, if they're not shown on on the financial statement, then it's going to be hard to find them. But you have to read between the lines because just because they're not shown $1,000 an ounce, doesn't mean that there isn't a disclosure that says, oh, we have gold bars at the fort or at the safe. So you have to really read between the lines. A trick craft. I like it. Thank you. Well, how important is social media for you? Social media is fundamental because in this day and age, we really expose everything on the social networking sites. And there are some people that log into Facebook every day at 4 o'clock 
and give their 1040 or their exact location. So if you know that a person logs in at 5 o'clock because they get home from work, then odds are that you're going to be able to script trace them because they're right there. So social networking makes it much easier, I think. And I know that law enforcement catches criminals through Facebook too. So I, so I'm sure that it, this must be like the gold mine to to you guys. Well, it's a gold mine to us, and it's a gold mine to anybody that uses the internet because not mm-hmm. only do they track criminals, sexual predators, and the like, but they also use it for marketing. And just like UPS tracks a package, they track us. So. It really is an innovative method that's up and coming for skip tracing. Now, you teach classes and seminars about business fraud all the time. Um, you do military searches. You really got uh, you, your company does a lot of, of of teaching and good work. How can people get in touch with you and f- if they need to f- to find you or find someone? Well, if anybody needs to find me, my email address is susan at searchnetmgt.com, and the phone number is 212-447-5913. I will be teaching my next seminar on April 12th, and it's called Advanced Skip Tracing and Cyber Tracking. And you can Mm. sign Mm -hmm. up for that at www.nbi-sems.com. Terrific. And I I have a website education. I'm sorry? You can earn continuing legal education in your state for that. Well, and I've got, Susan, this has been a pleasure to have you on the show. Um. I want you to check out her website also, www.searchnetmgt.com. If you're interested in uh, her book on skip tracing, check it out at Amazon. Thanks again, Susan, for being with me. Well, thank you for having me, Susan. It was great fun. (laughs) Same here, too. All right, and you out there, you are listening to Crime Prevention 101, the radio show with an optimistic perspective on a sober subject. Up next, the Rape Declaration Forum has been described as a raw, powerful radio experience not to be missed. You'll see why when we come back. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in your brain inspired really fast. All the time. The number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com Hi, this is Susan Bartlestone, host of Crime Prevention 101, and I want to tell you about My Mobile Witness, a revolutionary service that transforms your camera phone into a personal safety device. My Mobile Witness believes safety is improved when you remove anonymity from dangerous scenarios. If you're in a stalking situation, for example, if you have an order of protection against someone, or if your profession places you in situations that are potentially dangerous, I want you to check out My Mobile Witness. And you parents of college students, ask the school to check out the My Mobile Witness University program. With custom-tailored options, aimed at keeping both students and faculty safe. Every campus could benefit from the My Mobile Witness University service. For more information, go to MyMobileWitness.com. Get ready to change your life. Achieve your dreams, become a success story, and accomplish so much more. Tune in to Life Radio with Todd Newton. It's your open access to leading authors, experts, and trainers from the world of self-improvement, hosted by one of the world's top certified life coaches and motivational speaker, Todd Newton. Achieve the highest levels of personal development in all areas of your life. Listen to Life Radio with Todd Newton. 
Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific on the Voice America Variety Channel. Violence, theft, drugs, graffiti, it's all part of joining a gang. In times like these, we need to protect our kids and our community from gangs. Gangs often prey on teens with low self-esteem who perform poorly in school and who seek a sense of belonging. Protect kids from gangs. Know who they're hanging out with. Encourage them to become involved in school activities. Give kids a positive alternative to gangs. To learn more, visit ncpc.org or contact your local law enforcement agency. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello again. Susan Bartlestone here. Plenty of show left. Police are tweeting about us. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Come join the party. Really would love to have you there. Uh, got a resource for you men out there who want to be part of the solution. Terrific resource called MenCanStopRape.org. Please check it out. They're an amazing organization. Now, a radio show that truly tells it like it is. And if you're a rape survivor and you want to share your story with us tonight, we're inviting you to call in and speak with us. The number is 866-472-5787. Now, my next guests are the co-hosts of the Rape Declaration Forum. Rebecca Miles, who's uh, a producer, reporter, news writer, engineer, and pretty much anything else that needs to be done on WBAI 95, 99.5 FM, the show airs. And Jay Grace, who is a rape crisis counselor and survivor, who also produces and hosts her own variety show on her own network. Welcome, guys. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having us back. Yes, this is our third time and the third of many to come, I assure you. <laughs> My pleasure. Now, you know, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, so this is the perfect time to talk about your show, The Rape Declaration Forum. So, Rebecca, you you were the creator of the show, so why don't you start, t- talk a little about the show and how it got started. Well, it, it, was, a, it was actually a combination of, of um, I'll try and be brief, as brief as possible, but my, my boyfriend at the time, who unfortunately passed away uh, two years ago, he, he was doing erotic art. And what he kept encountering every time he asked models to model for him, nude poses, of course, was all this history about their their sexual history, as it turns out, and many, many of them um, had been raped. And he had gone over this a couple of times, and I I was doing a lot of news reporting, and I was doing all these stories on domestic violence, and always, always the news pieces featured the perpetrator, that his, his life history got covered, his picture was in the paper, and, and, you know, the, the future of whether he would go to jail or how the court case would go was always featured, but the victim was never featured, and for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But it occurred to me that there was this gap, you know, after they've gone through the trial, and these, of course, the things that do get to trial, these are the cases that do get to trial, what happens to these women? And there was just this gap. And I knew, I knew from, from just people I, I've spoken to that, there are years and years of trying to resolve what happens. Um, it's hard to get the proper help. And so this combination of this sort of all this history of, of women who th- these crimes had happened to and not resolving it and therefore not feeling comfortable being showing their full nakedness for an artist mm-hmm. and the work that I was doing combined in this, well, there's this hidden, there's this hidden silence. And you there do was- hit, you do hear these sort of cable shows where people talk about these awful things that happen, but still it was like all those women who never got their court cases or their cases were never sensational enough to make it to the papers. Um, what happened to them? And so that really was what started the beginning of it. It's just a, 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 the concept is just mind-boggling, absolutely, that there was just no place 
for women to talk freely right. about what happened to them. Yeah. Now, Jay, you were actually the first guest on the show, correct? Correct. Um, uh, Rebecca's yes, uh, boyfriend at that, at that time, um, we sort of uh, started communicating via email. I shared my story with him, and he kept telling me, oh, maybe you would want to uh, share your story on air. And I apprehensively said, if you cannot find anyone, absolutely, I will do it, but try to find someone. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and um, it came out, too, that I had to do it because um, we found out that a lot of people uh, found the concept really interesting but were um, not willing to share it, their stories live on air. So I apprehensively went there and um, went and, and did the interview, and I found it so healing and so empowering. It was so freeing for me. I had no idea uh, the impact of sharing my story would have on me. It, it has changed my life completely. And subsequently, um, Rebecca graciously had offered and said, would you like to co-host it, which was a, a gift from heaven for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, and the two of you now, uh, it's what, two years now? No, Three seven. Years? No, seven, seven years. We've been on air seven years. I know. It's Is it phenomenal. seven years? No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What an archive of stories. It's, 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 um. quite, it's quite incredible. We, we've had people from all across the country. Um, we haven't done very much international work, but, mm-hmm. but, but so, certainly a lot of military sexual crime. We've, um, so a lot of people have gone to fight in Iraq and things have happened and, um, but uh, it's it's funny. I mean, we've had you 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 on the show, Susan, and we did this wonderful thing of offering um, a um, uh, self protection class. Right, my personal safety safety club. program. And mm-hmm. um, so we we can you know mix the content up a little bit. But we we've had people from we've had men, women, uh, to, uh, adults going back to what things crimes that happened to them when they were children. Um, we've we've dealt with the weaknesses in the system, the weaknesses from the legal point of view, the weaknesses from services. We had a rape victim who um, managed to get to hospital, but then there was nothing in place for her to get home. She was naked. She had no shoes. She Mm -hmm. had no money. Amazing. And um, we worked with one group who does original research into sexual assault, and some of the the publications that they've come out there were fascinating, and theirs was to see what were the failures in services. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, so we, we really it's quite unfortunately it's quite extensive and there's and I, unfortunately there's never never seems to be an ending of people who've gone through this awful or, you know gone through rape and um, and so unfortunately we we have you know a, a endless source of guests and um, I wish it wasn't. Yeah, there's no shortage, right? No, no, exactly, exactly. And people can, and let me say that this is live. It's a live show. Mm-hmm. So, and people can call in and add their comments. That's to, right. That's right. Now we've got a clip, and I'm going to ask Justin, my engineer. Justin, can you uh, play that clip for us? I just wanted you all to get a flavor of what the show is about. <laughs> This is Rebecca Miles with the monthly Rape Declaration Forum. If this is the first time you've tuned in, uh, the Rape Declaration Forum is a virtual safe space where survivors of rape, sexual and physical abuse get to share their stories. In the show tonight, we'll be joined by Ursula. Ursula was 24 when she was held hostage for a night and raped by an L.A. undercover cop. Trying to figure out how to work through the aftermath of the rape, she went on to start a rape crisis centre in her hometown in Iowa. And in doing so, learned a lot about counselling and the recovery process. So I went to a policeman and asked him uh, where I could go for the night, where a safe place was to sleep for the night. He took me to um, what was a pretty shabby hotel. You know, I, I he he moved so fast. I didn't even see him. I, be, I I don't even remember how it happened, but he was obviously trained, you know, in, in combat. And uh, I was down on the bed on my back, and um, he literally had me by the throat. I mean, there's a um, you know there's a spot on your throat. I guess they call it the jugular, where if you um, if you press on it, you can snap the 
trachea, and you're basically it killed somebody instantly. So that's he had me by that spot on my throat. Hello, you're on the rape declaration forum. Hey, how you guys doing? All Good. right, how are you? Hi. All right, um, I'd like to know um, what happened. I mean, I'm sure you get this question a lot, but with the cop, and um, if he ever pursued that guy, I'd like to so there'd be some accountability, and you know, what's up with that? The question about the cop. That, yes. Um, yes. No, he was never held accountable for it. Um. That's just a little taste <laughs> of the rape declaration forum. And uh, you were telling me this was the show was one of your most powerful. You were telling me. Yes, because of um, um, because of Ursula setting up this rape crisis center and the. She did it at a time when it was the early 70s, and um, there were these. This was just a, coincide with the, the, really the development of the women's movement. So that she'd heard about one in a neighbouring town, had gone to that rape crisis centre, and realised they were just beginning too. And at the time, uh, the federal government was dispersing monies to states and saying, if you can come up with a community program and show that it's valid. You can you can apply for these funds. So there was a lot of money going to states to set up programs in, in communities, as, as I just described. And so she was, it was all this sort of historically timely effort. Um, mm-hmm. And she went to see the guy who was in charge of agreeing which projects would be funded. And he was like, "Yeah, this this sounds great." And she really had nothing set up. She was above a bookstore, and there was nothing in place. She, it was her home phone she was using, and she had a sort of extension for the for the rape crisis center. And um, but she got some funding, and she was ha- had to put it in place and set it all up for three months, and then she had to fund it, find additional funding. Um, it turned out that the fellow who was running the, the fund for the state was one of her first clients who had been uh. raped as a child and saw the need for this. And so it's ah, you, incredible. You can't. This yes. This is this is the kind. This is exactly the kind of thing that that needs to be heard. Uh, these are these are powerful raw stories. Like I said, mm. how can people find Rape Declaration Forum? Well, they can go to our Facebook page. Just go to Facebook um, and go enter RDF Radio. That's RDF Radio at Facebook dot com. And if you want, you can also email us at rdfinfo at yahoo.com. That's rdfinfo at yahoo.com. And the show airs on the third Thursday. Once a month. Of, of the month. On, uh, at 9 p.m. It's a 9 p.m. Eastern. And it's a WBAI 99.5 FM. So you mm-hmm. can, and it streams on the Internet. Right, at mm-hmm. wbai.org. All right, WBAI.org. Rebecca and Jay, next time you'll come back, we'll do, you'll, you'll come back longer for me, okay? okay? I, just, I hate to break this off. It was such an amazing, uh, it's always amazing when you come on. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Susan. Thank you for having us. All right, now listen, when we come back, how you or your organization can get involved with Sexual Assault Awareness Month activities. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yeah! If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. one 472 5787 That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. 
If you think you've seen online TV before, let us surprise you. VoiceAmerica.tv is online now. The leader in live Internet talk radio has done it again. Multiple channels, a state-of-the-art viewing experience, live and on-demand programs streaming 24 hours a day. It's exactly what you want, when you want it. VoiceAmerica.tv. From health and wellness to business, sports, and everything in between. Discover our new world. Visit VoiceAmerica.tv now and experience the future of online television. VoiceAmerica.tv. You're walking alone. A group of people is hanging out just ahead. Suddenly, they surround you. Hey, yo, where you going? Come here. Before you know it, you're being robbed. It's called a pack robbery, a robbery involving a group of assailants, and it can be violent. In times like these, trust your instincts. Don't become their next victim. Avoid suspicious groups. Avoid desolate or poorly lighted areas. Be aware of your surroundings. To learn more about pack robberies, visit ncpc.org or contact your local law enforcement agency. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in your brain inspired really fast. All the time, the number one Internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Hello, this is Crime Prevention 101. I'm Susan Bartlestone. Don't forget that we are available on iTunes. You never have to be without us. I've got another great resource for you that you might want to take a look at. A pretty interesting website, I thought. It's called StopItNow.com. StopItNow.com. Okay, and now let's meet uh, Tracy Cox from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. And uh, Tracy is an award-winning journalist, and she is now the communications director for the uh, NSVRC. Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm well, Susan. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, let's start at the beginning a little bit. Um, how, when we talk about the sexual assault problem in the U.S., what what are we talking about? What are what are some of the numbers? Well, we know that one in six women experience sexual violence sometime during their lifetime. Um, and then one in 33 men also experience some form of sexual violence during their lifetime. Um, as far as children go, uh, for child sexual abuse, one in four girls will be victim, as mm-hmm. well as one in six boys. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is a lot. I mean, you know, th- those are not happy figures here. Right, right. All. It's about 20% of the population. Mm. And those are the reported ones. Exactly, exactly. We, uh, most of the majority of the crimes, uh, 62, 62 to 63 percent, are unreported um, because either the victim they they feel afraid, or um, they may not have a lot of faith in the justice system. You know, they may have conflicting feelings about the person who committed violence toward them because 75 percent mm-hmm. of the time, the person committing the sexual violence is known by the victim. Exactly. So they don't they don't always come for, forward and, and talk about what happened. So exactly. that's your, or it could be a lot worse. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and how did this come about? Well, Sexual Assault Awareness Month um, is in April, so we have about a week and a half yet until it officially launches. Um, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, we are a project of the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape. And we were founded in in 2000, and shortly after that, we did a bunch of research within the field, and we came to the conclusion that April would be deemed Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And during the month, um, the real focus is to just emphasize prevention of sexual assault, uh, to spread education, to raise awareness, and actually then also break down some of the myths that surround sexual violence and really give people a broader uh, definition of it, like bring it into the, I think a lot of people think that, you know, sexual violence just equals rape, but actually there's a continuum of behaviors, and, you know, it can be anything from 
rape or fondling or child sexual assault. It can be mm-hmm. um, stalking, sexual harassment, human trafficking. So a lot of things fall within the continuum of sexual violence. Okay, and what types of resources and information do you provide? Now, your website uh, is nsvrc.org, and then if you want to find out specifically about Sexual Assault Awareness Month, it would, you add a slash and an S-A-A-M, right? That's yes. your website. Yes. What can people find there? What kind of resources and information have you got? Uh, well, a lot of stuff, um, just basically with, with on the SAM site, that's what we call it, um, you know, short for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Right. Um, SAM. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> on the SAM site, they'll find a variety of things. Um, for this year's campaign, uh, the theme is It's Time to Get Involved, and it mm. emphasizes engaging bystanders in sexual assault prevention. And like, a bystander is really anyone that witnesses or hears an event um, I mean, basically, essentially, we're all bystanders because as life unfolds around us, we see things, you know, you're at the grocery store, you may see something that happens or you hear someone say something. So it's just really getting everyone involved in prevention efforts. So on our website, um, we um, have fact sheets, we have guides, we have um, tips, like if you want to plan events, we have a whole list of suggested events that you could plan. We have... Um, sample letters to the editor. We have uh, tips for parents and caregivers, how to, you know, spark dialogue. Um, you know, we have tips for health care providers. Um, and then also, too, this year's uh, campaign really has an online focus as well. So what we mm-hmm. did is we included within the campaign resources is a list of daily posts for social networking sites. So, like, say you're on Facebook or Twitter, we gave you basically 30 days, 30 tweets. So each day you could be posting something, you know, related to Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Oh, terrific. I'm going to get that myself. Okay, yeah, I that's will, on there. I will definitely start doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice way to just spread the word, get people involved. And then in addition to um, that online component, we're asking Facebook and Twitter users this year to um, change their profile pictures. And since our theme is it's time to get involved, we're asking people and urging them to take pictures of themselves with clocks, proclaiming how they're going to get involved this year, and then use that as their profile picture for April. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So give us, a, give us some an idea of some of the activities that um, people can, can plan. And this, this is... This is just stuff you can take back into your communities. I don't think most of it probably uh, won't take that long to put together, maybe. And what are some of the things that um, people can uh, that people have done and can do that would okay. uh, commemorate this? Well, on our website, we have a calendar listing. So you can go on our main page, and underneath that, there's a little link for calendar. And you can look at all the events that are posted for April, and you can post your own events. And some of the things that are happening um, are like take back the night rallies, um, like uh, vigils, uh, survivor speakouts. Um, we have one local event that's um, a ball game actually, where you know a, a team is partnering with the local YWCA, and they're doing like a community awareness night. Um, there's a lot of different things. You, there's art galleries that are being set up, clothesline events. Um, so really, it's just, you know, however your creativity sparks. It's like there's really something that you can customize for your audience, yep. for your community. These are not, yeah, these, these don't require um, necessarily, uh, uh, you know, a lot of expertise in something. It's kind of like whatever you're good at, mm-hmm. you, can, you can get together with someone and, 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 um, and make it happen and then post it on their website on, on this, the National Sexual Violence Resource Center SAM website so that other people in your area can find out um, that it's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great exchange of ideas, too, because then you can see what other people are doing, and that might inspire you for, like, planning maybe next year. Because, like I said, there's so many creative events out there, um, and really a lot of them don't cost a lot of money to organize, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it can be an art show. Uh, you know, you can be planting trees or flowers or anything like that. 
So I was looking in uh, some of the uh, and I we I had I had uh, your predecessor on last year, mm-hmm. and we, I was looking at some of the events that um, that they did last year, and I mean these these are just terrific things. Some group did uh, a presentation of the Vagina Monologues, the mm-hmm. the play by Eve Ensler, which is a terrific uh, uh, thing to do for this month, I think. We had a Break the Silence Awareness Walk. Mm-hmm. This is uh, a couple, three different groups that look like a sorority was one of them. So campuses, you, you can do it too if you're on a college campus. Um, there was a, an annual walk, uh, Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, and I think it was uh, one of the rape crisis centers in uh, Connecticut did this with uh, one of the news channels was part of their sponsors. Coffee House and Speak Out. You know, go down to your local McDonald's, you know, and see what you can come up with there. Oh, right. And there's also, like, poetry readings. Um, we were contacted by someone who is actually organizing a film festival. They're partnering with one of their local movie theaters. So, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. Oh, I like that, a movie festival. I think that would be a terrific idea. There are some really interesting um, movies out there that I think uh, might might do nicely. Um, there was a Denim Day self-defense training uh, program, these self-defense schools out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Denim Day, I thought this was very interesting what Denim Day was. Are you familiar with the Denim Day yeah, um, Denim Day was it's um, handled by Peace Over Violence in Los Angeles, and um, this year it's being observed on Wednesday, April 27th. And what it is is it's um, it came out of an Italian court case where a woman was raped, and the court said that since she was wearing jeans, that she must have um, not been assaulted because the <laughs> jeans were tight and they couldn't be removed without her help. So um, the case was so upsetting that as a sign of support for the victim, people started wearing jeans, and that's how they began. Absolutely outrageous. Denim Day, you self-defense schools out there, my sisters and some of my brothers, get on the stick here. Let's do some sexual assault awareness programs in honor of Sam and Denim Day. What was it, April? April 27th. It's Wednesday. April 27th. Mm-hmm. All right. There's still plenty How's, of time to plan something with that. It's still time to plan it exactly. Towards You can plan something for the end of the month if you can't do it uh, at the beginning. Mm-hmm. How, how can, how can, uh, what can people do to find you so that they can uh, get some guidance and some help? Well, we're available online. Um, like you mentioned, our website is www.nscrc.org. Um, that's our main site, and when you click on the main site, there is a sexual assault awareness logo in the um, top right-hand corner. You can click on that. That'll take you to the sexual assault awareness page. Um, in addition, we are available by phone. Um, you can contact the Resource Center. Um, our number toll-free is 877-739-3895. And um, also, if you have any questions, you can always email us at resources at NS. CRC.org. And in addition to our own website, we have um, a Facebook and Twitter page as well. All right. Go get those tweets and those those postings you could, like I'm going to do, and uh, we can start spreading the message, nsvrc.org. Tracy, that is great information that you gave out. You know, thank you so much for being with me this year again. Well, thank you for having us. Um, You know, just thank you for spreading the word. It's our pleasure to be a part of it. Well, you'll be back again next year, you know for sure. Okay. (laughs) All right. Now, don't forget, if you'd like more information about any of the guests or the show topics or the resources that I talk about on the show, I post links to everyone and everything on my blog, crimeprevention101.com. So you can find it there. Don't worry if you couldn't get your pencil and you couldn't copy it down, nsvrc.org, because it's going to be right there on crimeprevention101.com. Now stay right where you are when we come back. How to hide valuables in plain sight and fool thieves. 
just one of the personal safety products that I want to tell you about. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. Hi, this is Susan Bartlestone, host of Crime Prevention 101. And I want to tell you about My Mobile Witness, a revolutionary service that transforms your camera phone into a personal safety device. My Mobile Witness believes safety is improved when you remove anonymity from dangerous scenarios. If you're in a stalking situation, for example, if you have an order of protection against someone, or if your profession places you in situations that are potentially dangerous, I want you to check out My Mobile Witness. And you parents of college students, ask the school to check out the My Mobile Witness University program with custom-tailored options aimed at keeping both students and faculty safe. Every campus could benefit from the My Mobile Witness University service. For more information, go to MyMobileWitness.com. Every day, people are afraid to report violent crimes. In times like these, choosing to report a crime or helping the police can be a difficult decision. A no-snitching culture has sprung up in our communities, making it unpopular and sometimes even dangerous to report a crime. Do the right thing by calling 911 or your local crime tip line. If you're the victim of a crime, report it. If you know about a crime, report it. To learn more about how to do the right thing, visit ncpc.org or contact your local law enforcement agency. A message from the U.S. Department of Justice, National Crime Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. All right, we're back, and this is Susan Bartlestone. This is Crime Prevention 101. I've got one more resource for you that um, that I think uh, is worth checking out. If you are a survivor and you are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, this is a, a good blog. It's ptsdsurvival.blogspot.com. That was ptsdsurvival.blogspot.com. All right, now let's uh, find out about some of the neat products that I found for you. I always like to end with uh, with something that I that I think you can find valuable. And I was uh, looking in a catalog. This was Magellan M A G E L L A N S dot com. And what well, this is something. It's it's, uh, it's called the uh, the the garment hideaway. And it, it looks like a tank top hanging in your closet. It's a, it's a garment on a hanger. comes with a hanger. But it really is a very clever place to, um, to hide valuables because you can flip up the front part of the garment, and you can, you'll see there in the picture there's all these little compartments there. You can put jewelry, uh, credit cards I see, money is there, and... It will just look like another uh, piece of clothing hanging in your closet. I thought that was very, very, very clever. Um, this is Magellan's, M-A-G-E-L-L-A-N-S dot com. But don't worry because it's all going to be posted on CrimePrevention101.com. All right. Um, your pocket is most likely to be picked in Barcelona, Rome, Paris, Madrid, and Athens. Interesting. And 
and uh, they're saying that uh, you can uh, strap your purse across your chest, um, and uh, you might want to keep your valuables in your hanging garment hideaway over there instead of carrying it around with you. So I like that. All right, what have I got here? All right, oh, this is so interesting. I've been holding on this one for quite a while. I don't know what exactly to think about what to think about, but this is called the liar's card. And um, you won't believe what it lets you do. It lets you change your caller ID to say that you're someone else. Um, I, 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 I honestly, I'm going to tell you what this thing, I think you should know about it because I think you should know what people um, are capable of doing. But, um, but this is something I can, I can see that it would be helpful for people who, who need to keep their identity hidden and maybe not so useful. So it's a mixed bag here, but I thought it was interesting. I thought I'd talk about it. Okay, let's see. Here we've got the door devil. And now uh, this is um, this is a really good uh, door lock. You know how you, how you see sometimes people kick in the door. Well, they're not going to be able to do it if you've got one of these things on it. It's um, I think they said here um, nearly seventy percent of burglars actually enter by kicking or forcibly breaching your door. And what this does, it really reinforces it. They just can't be kicked in. And there's an interesting video. It's doordevil.com. And um, and you can see how hard this uh, guy is trying to kick that door down. But it just uh, it's just not going to it's not going to work with it. So doordevil.com, like this one. Good. And um, also, I think I mentioned massmail.com before, but. This is a good product. This is this is something I should talk about uh, again. Um, this is a way to filter email filtering to scan for questionable contacts uh, and content in your child's email, and uh, it filters e- all emails, incoming and outgoing. Looks for keywords and email, and uh, and when it comes up with something. That email is intercepted and delivered to the parent, and then the parent can decide uh, whether to allow the email to be delivered to the child or whoever it is, or they can delete it or block, and more, most importantly, block the sender from future contact with their child. Uh, and it's a passive monitor system. I think this is extremely helpful, and uh, every, I think you should really look into it. Um, it, you can do it on phones as well as computers. It, it uses so, social website uh, scanning to, so that you can also scan your your child's um, social media pages. Very important. Mousemail.com. All right. We've got a couple of minutes, at least uh, I think one more minute or so to closing. So let me do... Just one or two more um, facts and myths about rape that uh, the numbers are just so intense. Um, one of the myths, uh, rape is committed by in- crazy people, sex maniacs. I want to re- restate this. As many as 80% of, in- of assaults involve acquaintances. Someone that you know intimately, coworker, maybe not intimately, but someone you know, coworker, a friend, friend of the family, someone who delivers your mail, and it is not myth. It is myth that it is impulsive. It is not. Seventy-five percent of all assaults are planned. I'm going to do some more of these, and I think I'll post some more of these. But you know what? That's a wrap for tonight. Please don't forget. We'd love to hear from you. By all means, post your comments and suggestions on my blog, CrimePrevention101.com. Tell me what works. Tell me that you want to you want to hear more from the Rape Declaration Forum. Want to hear more from their show? Let me know that. Want to hear more about activities for Sexual Assault Awareness Month? 
Let me know. Make sure you tell your friends because you and I will be doing this again next week, same time, same place, and it would be a crime not to listen. So stay tuned and stay safe. We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guests, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimepreventionone.com today. Have a great week and a safe week.